safety. I'll be back with all those details. President Joe Biden is proposing an ambitious expansion of government spending and tax hikes on corporations and the wealthy. He did this last night when he spoke before a joint session of Congress. He says his future plans will benefit working families and children. Now Republican lawmakers are weighing in about these plans. Let's go to our Kevin Fry, who has the latest from Washington. Good morning. Well, it was certainly a different sort of State of the Union type address with such a scaled down presence of lawmakers in the chamber itself, not the thousand plus folks we're so used to. This all, of course, because of the coronavirus. Nonetheless, the president took uh, his speech uh, and used it to really tout things that he would like to see lawmakers act upon on Capitol Hill. Among other things, he wants them to pass police reform next month by the anniversary of the George Floyd uh, death in uh, Minneapolis. He wants a $15 minimum wage. He called for uh, passing the Violence Against Women's Act. And he also called for gun control measures to get through Congress in light of recent mass shootings. And I'll do everything in my power to protect the American people from this epidemic of gun violence. But it's time for Congress to act as well. These kinds of reasonable reforms have overwhelming support from the American people, including many gun owners. The country supports reform this, and Congress should act. This shouldn't be a red or blue issue. But of all the things that the president spoke out about during this address, really the one he focused on the most was this American Families Plan, his kind of newly laid out uh, next step in response to the uh, coronavirus part of the recovery phase. Among other things, that plan, as we talked about yesterday, calls for paid family leave, free preschool, community college for free for two years, uh, and, and really investments in kind of this, the care economy for families. Uh, Republicans are already skeptical of the expenditures, how much this is going to cost. They also are skeptical of some of the president's calls of bipartisanship since Inauguration Day. Here's what we heard from one of them. I want to see the actions. I'm still hopeful that maybe there's a reconsideration on the infrastructure. I think there's a real willingness. I think uh, I certainly campaigned uh, on the need for infrastructure in an area like like where I'm from uh, that has crumbling roads and bridges, bridges and broadband, I think is important. So action speaking large, uh, louder than words from Congressman Jacobs' perspective there. At the same time, Democrats are pushing ahead, saying, look, big action is needed. The coronavirus exposed all sorts of issues in society, and so it is important to go forward with these large bills that the president is pushing for. There's a difference between governing and just criticizing people who are trying to get things done. Uh, we want to end the pandemic, grow this economy, and invest in America's families. It's going to be expensive, but it's high time the government started to invest in working people again, and that's what this plan does. Of course, now begins really the hard part, which is trying to get any of this through Congress, which is, of course, so evenly divided with a 50-50 Senate and Democrats having a very slim majority in the House. So will they be able to get any of these measures done? In some cases, they could try to use that reconciliation process they used with the COVID relief bill going around the 60-vote filibuster in the Senate, where they'd have to get those Republican votes. So there is the potential maybe on the infrastructure package, on this families plan, that maybe they could forge ahead with just a bare bones Democratic majority passing it through. But some of these other measures, they're going to require Republican buy-in unless they do away with the filibuster. So it's going to be a lot to watch over the next couple weeks on Capitol Hill as they start negotiations on all of this. Let's just say that in the grand scheme of things, one might argue that the COVID relief bill, that multi-trillion dollar COVID relief bill from a few weeks ago, might have been the easy part of Biden's presidency. Reporting in Washington, I'm Kevin Fry, Spectrum News. Well, if you would like to read more about the president's speech or hear more about the president's plan, just go to our website. We've put some more information there. More coverage will be found on our Spectrum News app as well, including eight takeaways from our Capitol Tonight team. In COVID-19 news, the Capitol Region is having success with vaccine distribution. The Capitol Region